Welcome to Maze Cast, episode 28, I think, maybe 27. Uh, this episode, I'm joined by Beals, aka Andrew, and myself, Alex, aka SP. And, and we're not joined by Vince or Ben today, uh, but today is probably going to be a shorter episode. We're talking about room 45, but not in the usual sense. We're just going to be going over the solution of the maze, the riddle of the maze. Ooh. This is separate from the riddle of the guide, and it's also separate from the path, how to get to from room 1 to 45 and back to 1 in the shortest amount of steps, which is 16, um, without getting lost or trapped. Um, right, because we've talked, in all of the rooms on the path, we've talked extensively about trying to figure out what the correct door is to take. And we're not going to talk about what we think is the correct door to take out of 45 either, which honestly I have no idea how it's clued at all. But we're going to save that for another episode. Right now we're just going to focus on the question that room 45 poses and the solution that's scattered throughout the rest of the maze. That's right. Um, so... <laughs> um, how about we do this in sort of an interview thing? I'll I'll ask you questions, and uh, so, yeah. sure. okay. So, right. um, is I, I guess it's described in on the first page of the book and on the back of the book that there's a riddle in the in the maze. Um, how does one come up with the question of the room or the riddle rather? One come up with the question of the room. Yes. Um, so. All of the, you can see the question mark in the room, which, uh, in room 45, which may be a bit of a pointer um, that, in fact, the entire question is visually um, sort of rebus, if you want to call it that. It's, it's all visually clued word for word um, in the room, room 45. And there are six, what house will I? Yes, there are six, um, six words that you have to put together as well as the question mark to form the question. And, um, I can go ahead and describe them for you now, if you like. Yeah, I will pull up the book on my screen and screen yeah. for the people. So just for a little context, this was, um, let's see, this was a riddle that was originally posted. Um, the contest was posted in 1985 um, and ended uh, two years later. Um, and the idea was that there would be a $10,000 prize, uh, $10, prize to the first person who would be able to um, completely solve the solve the riddle of the maze, not just find the shortest path, but actually come up with the answer, the one-word answer. And uh, nobody managed to do it, but um, they split it up among 12 people. Oh, no, recursion. Ah, oh, my God. Um, you they split it up among the 12 people who were closest to solving it. And, um, and, but they, they posted uh, they posted some clues. When they realized that it was kind of... Um, rather a lofty task, they, uh, they sent out upon request uh, six additional one-sentence clues, each of which helped you to kind of get at one of the six words that's clued here in this image. Um, so if you like, I'll just go ahead and take those one by one and introduce the six words. Okay. So the first one, um, and this is, these are sent out, um, you know, I don't actually know, I don't know if we've talked about this, I don't know if these were written by Manson, um, which they seem like they could have been, um, but they were sent out by the um, the corporation that was holding the contest. The first of these clues is, um, I'll tip my hat if the two of you can solve this. And um, so there's a hat in the room, so of course that's a clue. And the fact that it, to, it points to two of you uh, indicates that we were probably meant to put the hat together with some other thing in the room in order to form the first word. And uh, we have the W lying around, and we can put the W and the hat together to form what, and they're sort of occupying relatively uh, opposite positions within the room. Not quite, but you have that chair there, but uh, it's close enough that you can get the first word. So we have what, and we have a question mark, so obviously this is some kind of question uh, that's going to begin with what. And clue number two is you can get into these two shoes only if you don't go anywhere. Now two shoes. Again, we have this two going on. We see one shoe here, and it's not clear why he would be referring to two shoes when there aren't any other obvious shoes in the room. But in fact, there is another shoe, and it's the horseshoe. And it's the letter U, which could also be interpreted as a horseshoe. So you put the shoe and U together, rearrange the letters, and you get house. And that is exactly where you could uh, you can get into these two shoes only if you don't go anywhere, i.e. you stay at home. So this kind of layered, layered uh, 
wordplay and so forth is very characteristically Manson. So I kind of I suspect that Manson wrote these, although I don't know that that's been confirmed. So we have what house, and then four more words. Now number three is you will find two names on the table, and they go together like donut and hole. So you look on the table and you see two objects. There's a well, it's hard to describe it, what it is without just giving it away, but it's a it's a plank on which there are four little trunks in a row, little stumps, and you have a sheet of paper with uh, a sun on it, as well as I am and the image of a fist raised with a spear in it. So, in fact, this is a simultaneous clue to two different names. You have uh, the the wood object you can interpret as a row of wood, and that gives you wood row, which together with the sun would seem to suggest Woodrow Wilson. At the same time, the I am and the fist shaking a spear suggest William Shakespeare. So the, the, the element that's missing from both of these names is, of course, will. So the third word is will. What house will? Now, the fourth one is you must choose between two pictures. And we've already used up the picture of the hat and the question mark. We've already got the sun and the fist accounted for. Um, there's still the I remaining as well as that uh, the Z on the other side, but it would seem that the two most obvious, the most obvious pair of pictures that hasn't yet been covered is um, these two at the top. Now, I didn't know what this is because I'm very young, uh, but apparently this one on the left is an all, an A-W-L, whereas the lady on the right is, of course, a nun. So you have to choose between all or none. And um, it happens that... Uh, it's not so obvious which one you really have to choose, and uh, I think people have tried to um, devise solutions that in some way use the none, but according to the official solution, the one that you're going to choose is all. So what house will all? Now we'll move on to clue number five, and that is there are no two ways you can read this sign, and that's in reference to this sign uh, with the with the letters E-L-V-I that's lying upside down in the doorway to room 28. Now you can do a whole lot with that, uh, and you can take that in some really crazy directions, but one of the things that uh, <laughs> is to do, yeah, uh, yes, if you're Alex, you can really have fun with that one. Yeah, we've had fun with this one. Yes, um, but there are, there are several words that you can spell. Um, you can actually spell at least three words, so I'm not sure, four words actually, so I'm not sure why uh, two ways, and you can chime in if you want to help at all. I'm not sure why it only says two ways, when in fact you can spell at least four words. You can spell vile, veil, evil, or live, but live is the one that you're going to have to choose. Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, is this <clears throat> the strangest clue insofar as there isn't an obvious duality? There are at least four choices. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I think it just goes with the rest of the choices you make in the room, specifically like having to choose the all or none pi pictures. Um, and then you got, um, you know, the, the, the double duty Woodrow Wilson Shakespeare thing going on. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, 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 I guess it's just an attempt to make it even harder. I guess. Like, like you know, you, you just have four choices and then. If you, not, if you get down to the point where you have the other five words, you can choose live because it's the only verb, and you kind of need a verb because will is an auxiliary, and you can't just leave the. You know, it would be some people. Some people cast dispersions on the grammaticality of the question, but it would be even more grammatical if there weren't a proper verb carrying the sentence. So you pretty yeah. much just have to choose live by default. So yeah, I mean, it's it's just a matter of uh, you know f first first you get all the words together you might not be getting it in the order that uh, right especially if you didn't have this prompt with the words in the exact order uh, yeah you're just trying to hash it out but oh wait so so you're saying that the clues that it, William Holt released um, they actually said the clues in the order of the sentence that yes the the them. order the order is uh, apparently um, well yeah because we know we have it confirmed and I'll get to that we have it confirmed. Um, what the what shape the question is officially supposed to take, and so um, the clues match the order um, so as to make it even a little bit easier, I suppose. So you do know that this is the fifth word uh, in the sentence. Oh, that's pretty helpful. Yeah, it's almost too helpful. <laughs> and so our final one is six, and that is um, you can see that another two pictures demonstrate their own kind of symmetry. So we've identified a lot of symmetry in the room, and the last two elements are 
the eye, which is clued by you can see, and this strange long, long Z. And I think that the reason why it's so tall uh, is meant to get us to try to think about it as something other than a Z, because in fact we're not supposed to interpret it as a Z at all. We're supposed to interpret it as an N flipped mm -hmm. on the eye. Oh! And so if you put together the I, uh, the letter I, an N, you get in. And so the full question is, what house will all live in? And there have been... Uh, there have been other interpretations, there are other um, questions that can also get you ultimately to the same solution, which is great, but I should say that this is, uh, I'm willing to take this as the official, um, the official question insofar as it was confirmed by Andrew Plotkin, who was one of the original generation of maze solvers. He was actually one of the people who was um, trying to work on this at the time that the contest was underway, and he had um, the solution officially mailed to him. I trust him on this. I don't think that he would. He's certainly not just some random guy. So uh, was this before the John Bailey site? Uh, it's a great question. He didn't specify in his post. This is on an essay um, which a lot of people who've Googled Maze may have seen because it's a top result. Um, it is called Maze, Beautiful, Inspirational, Unsolvable. If you want to Google that, it's, um, it's written by Jason McIntosh, and it's a really interesting... Uh, it's it, it takes a very admiring but pessimistic view of the mazes, well, obviously, it's solvability, which, of course, we try to we try to hack away at whatever we think is solvable, so um, I can't completely agree with the point of view, but it's a very uh, thoughtful and admiring but, uh, but critical piece, and Andrew Plotkin posted a few times, and, um, yeah, there's some other interesting lore there and some other, some other links to some of the old um, John Bailey stuff and that kind of thing, but I'm not sure whether uh, Andrew Plotkin got that solution confirmed before or after the heyday of John Bailey. But right. in any case, what house will all live in is the official question. And I think at that point I don't have much else to say. I'm going to pass it on to you if you'd like to describe the solution. Absolutely. So the solution um, is in a, also in a sentence form. Um, it, it really is ultimately just one word, but I believe that the the sentence is like a poetic answer to this question. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just pull it up here. Um, right, you kind of because you kind of you get the answer. The riddle, uh, the maze gives you an answer, but then you you have to sort of interpret that to get the real one word answer. Yeah, it's almost sort of it's really almost sort of like just the second half of the question almost. It's just adding more information. So correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the 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 answer so the so so the question is basically um, inside room 45 you can get all the words from Rebus puzzles within 45 and the answer is laid out in a breadcrumb trail mm -hmm. but between 40 even sorry not between 45 between 1 to 45 and then back to 1 using the path there's various letters and stuff peppered around other rooms in the maze right, uh, yeah, using their letters or um, it, in some cases objects too right or was yeah. that, or is that not true? Uh, and I will, I will. Either, yeah, it's the it's the shortest path um, because there are rooms that are considered to be part of the path because they're not part of the loop or the trap. But uh, all of the all of the elements that uh, that clue the 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 response, as I call it, not really the answer, but the response to the question, um, are found on the shortest path. And yeah, you can get them. Well, it's sort of you want to talk about how it's sort of split up between the way in and the way out because there are sort of two different means of of disguising them. Mm. No, I'm not following you. Well, in the sense that in the way out, um, there are letters that you have to gather, but in the way in, um, there are words that are clued in various other ways. Oh, I, I wasn't I wasn't aware that that it was that it, that it was split up like that. That there was word that you know there was it was different on the way in from the way out. Um, no, I, I don't know, but I, I guess you could talk about that, I could, or I could talk about what the actual uh, answer is. If you describe the answers uh, room for room, then maybe you'll, you'll know what I mean. Okay. Um. Hmm. Anyway, I want to sit here staring at my book, so uh, where is it? Oh, oh wow, this is long. Oh. Well, we've already talked about. We've already covered a lot of the individual um, 
words in the response that are clued whenever we've been in those relevant rooms. Uh, so I don't know whether or not you want to. Uh, I'm I'm just looking for the for that poetic sentence. It was like uh, on your shoulders. Yeah. Like Atlas, you bear it on your shoulders. Or was it upon? Yeah, it's upon. You bear it upon your shoulders. Yeah, there's some debate. Uh, in room 23, the room shoulder appears. Uh, but we were talking about this last episode, how there was um, you can get two letters in different rooms, and it's debated whether you can find an E in room, I believe it's 37. Right. So there's a little bit of a... The way you go, the way you go into um, room 45, you get all of the words in the response except for shoulders. You get like Atlas, you bear it upon. Upon that's the um, the blind man's room where you flip it upside down, and that gets you um, up and on. So uh, you yeah you get there, you get to your, and then you get um, you get to the center of the maze, and on the way out you get the letters for shoulders. But it's true as you say that there is a bit of um, there's a bit of confusion and there's a bit of debate about how exactly the letters break down in shoulders because some of them are really obvious, such as the fact that um, in room 20, which is the the final room before you exit the maze, before you get back to room 1, that is, um, you have two magazines or newspapers with S on the front page, but one of them is marked as an extra. So you discard that one, it's a spare, but you get the letter S, and that's obvious, it's right there. Uh, I mean, it might not be obvious to discard one of them, but you can see the letter S very plainly, uh, whereas in some of the other examples, and especially in the room with the shapes, uh, you guys are better with the room numbers than I am, but mm -hmm. the room with the triangle and so forth, and the, um, I mean, the cone and all of that. Yeah, 37 with a dice. Yeah. Yes, exactly, yeah. People have tried hard to, to, uh, to get the letter E out of there somewhere, and it's not exactly clear whether we're supposed to get it there or whether it's supposed to be somewhere else. There is definitely a little bit of haziness, but... Um, but nonetheless, it is confirmed. I should say, yeah, I should absolutely say that um, Andrew Plotkin supplied not only the question, um, but the response and the full one-word solution and the shortest path, although that's almost redundant at that point. All yeah, of we, have things, lot, we have a lot to live up to. We've got these guys who, with, with one... No, no, I mean, I, mean I, I don't mean that he cracked all of these things, although he probably um, did a lot to get there, but I just mean that all of these things were sent to him. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. sure. So all of those things are officially... Hard for doing the last well. word... Yeah, the response is officially confirmed, as is as much as is the question. Um, so shoulders is definitely the last word. Uh, we just we're still we haven't um, completely reached unanimous consensus on exactly where you can pin down all of the letters. Most of them are obvious in shoulders, but there, there are a few that are still a little bit elusive. Yeah, I mean, if they were if they were supplied in order, like if when you go from one room to another and it spells out shoulders the same way that you can get it from the from the clues order. Then it would be easier, but because you can't You're do right. that. Yeah, you actually can't. It's strange because yeah, the on the way in, um, the words are exactly in order, but then on the way out, they're not. I suppose because he thought it would be easier to unscramble one word, uh, as opposed to trying to form an entire sentence where you don't know what order the words are supposed to be in. So I guess just add a little extra element of obfuscation. He uh, scrambled the letters and shoulders. Mm -hmm. So there you have it, folks. The question of the maze <coughs> is that, and the answer is the globe. But it's always also being said as the Earth or the world. Um, well, which, funnily enough, is on the cover of the book, which people have delighted in pointing out. Solve the world's most challenging puzzle, and it's right there. Yeah. So I kind of like world as the solution. But yes, yeah. world, Earth, or globe, like Atlas. Um, there's been some discussion that because of the use of uh, William Shakespeare, you know, his his playhouse was the Globe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. And I, I hate to digress. I don't want to make this this thing too long. But uh, my I had a couple of other thoughts about the the William Shakespeare thing. You could also sort of get it from since you've got the W there, and then you've got the Woodrow. But you could literally write out Will with three. Lines, you know what I mean, like I L L. If it was all lowercase, you could type that out. Mm -hmm. Sort of, you can sort of get that with the like will I am. You know what I mean, will E M. Where are you getting the three lines? You could also get the th oh sorry four. Well, there's four lines here because it's the the, the the row of wood, but sort of just the sequential way that it goes, it looks sort of like a will I am. I don't know if you. Um, I don't know and if you. Will the sun on the other side too. I don't know if you think you're screen sharing right now, but I'm looking at your face. I'm not sure if. <laughs> okay, let me pull it up. Hold maybe up. Maybe in the video it, it is screen sharing, and I don't. I don't realize that. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah, show me where you get the other three lines. So you feel like Will is even more directly clued? Well, there's you... four lines. Like, you know, there, there, there are four lines, but I'm just saying it's sort of just the, from right to left, it sort of looks like, you know, the W. Oh, you're just interpreting the row of wood yeah. as the lines? Yeah, like W, and then you got the I. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, you... sort of, yeah. Oh, you're not seeing my screen. You're seeing my no, face. I'm still not seeing your screen, I'm afraid, but I mean... These, these images are, are available online. To, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, actually, that looks more like room 24. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so the W, and then you got like the I. I know there's an extra one here, but right. you can get the Will Sun. There's a Sun on the other side, or Will Yam. You know what I mean? You can get the two names. Yeah, it is kind of. I can see why that is attractive because of the fact that the W and the Wood Row are so close together that you, you right. can just read them contiguously. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what else can we say about this? Um, the chair so far, nobody's had an explanation for the chair in this yeah. room. Yeah, I was thinking about that. And, well, I suppose we should save that for our real full-fledged discussion of room 45 because it's possible that the chair is somehow supposed to help us get to the correct door, which, um, which is really hard to puzzle out. I don't know if there are text. Um, I mean, we know which one is the correct door, but this is actually one of the hardest rooms because it's so... Um, it's so deeply uh, involved in giving the question, and you would assume that most of these clues aren't going to be reused for other purposes. Um, it's very hard to get any clue to the actual correct door out of here, um, and I suppose we should probably save that for... Yeah, let's save that. we got plenty of material on that. Um, I'm not going to bring any of it up in this episode so that uh, we can keep the viewers on the hook for the next one. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I mean, as far as the chairs are concerned, um, I think there's actually something thematic going on in the whole maze with the chairs, but we overlook it just because they're normal objects, right? We we sort of think of them as things in the like that 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 clue to things in rooms rather than something that could be um, thematic, the same way top hat is, or the same way the umbrella is, or whatever the fish, the red herring. So we're gonna have to have a chair episode. Yeah, we could have a chair episode. Yeah, we definitely do that. I'll pull up a um, Yeah. Um, what else is there? The Elvis sign, the all. Um, I think that's it, really. Oh, I do want to, and this is related to the riddle, so that's why I'm going to mention it now. Um, I do want to uh, mention that some people have actually rejected the all and interpreted the nun as being in habit, as in... <laughs> and so they've actually put that together with the in, and they're like, oh, what house will... Uh, you know, I don't know exactly how they form the question, but they they make inhabit, which is a lot of fun and is really cool. And, um, I've never heard that. That's funny. Yeah. I, I love how there's so many puns that you can come up with. Yeah, you, you can do a lot. Nice. Um, there's also been mentioned. Th this is just sort of random stuff I'm mentioning. Um, in the shoe, you can get an XX one. I know you'll like this one. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, I don't know if that's related to to getting to the next room. Uh, Twenty-one. Yeah, not really. Yeah, twenty-three. If you could just somehow turn it into yes, because the correct. I mean, I might as well say it. The correct door is twenty-three. We won't talk too much about that, but I do find that interesting. We should bring that back up. Yeah. So you're saying that the long Z is actually an N, right? Yes, and I, I guess it's just that we're supposed to. The 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 extremely strange elongated shape is probably just supposed to get us to analyze it in different ways besides just taking it as a Z. Some people have actually said that the Z, you have to flip it the way that it would be flipped uh, within the retina or whatever. Um, I'm not too up on my eye functionality since high school. Um, exactly how it, the image is flipped within the eyeball, but um, I think it would I think it would be completely upside down or something. I'm not. I, yeah, it would be flipped. It would be it would yeah. be it's on a vertical scale the same way. Um, camera obscura, like when you have the, the pinhole, it'll be upside down. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah, so it's not a 90-degree flip, so, but it's still possible that maybe we're supposed to be thinking along those lines, but that seems, uh, it seems a bit, it's, I don't know, I've, I've never felt completely comfortable with that. Yeah, I've never understood what, what prompts us to, to flip the sign. Yeah, it's definitely one of the, the weaker clues. He probably could have found a different way to, to give us N, but what do you want? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, do you have anything else to add? Um. Gosh. Well, looking at the, at the room forty-five itself, I don't. Let's just. Else, we'll all live in like Atlas. You bear it upon your shoulders. Yeah. Um. 
I think we're good. Cool. Okay, folks, that's it. Uh, we will see you probably next week at some point. Happy yeah. long weekend. Oh, did you guys have a long weekend over there? Uh, no, I went to work today. You went to work today. Boomers. Okay, mm -hmm. folks, that's it. Me and Andrew are out, and we'll see you next week, and we'll probably decide on a room between now and then. We're going to do room 46. <laughs> I want to present. Yeah. All right. You're on. Thank you guys.